Hello and welcome everyone to Synapse Web. In our previous lecture, we have discussed about some basic definitions of thalassemia. We also had a detailed description about the alpha thalassemia. Now guys, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you to go and watch that video as well so that when we discuss about the beta thalassemia, you will have the continuity of this topic. Now, what's beta thalassemia? Beta thalassemia is actually a clinical condition in which we have either the partial or complete absence of beta genes. So there is either partial or complete absence of beta genes. Now the reason behind the, this is that there is gene mutation, actually point mutation of uh, beta genes which are located on chromosome number 11. And this is an important question. So there is point mutation of beta genes which are present on chromosome number 11 leading to beta thalassemia. Now guys, as we discussed about the alpha thalassemia, alpha thalassemia was caused due to gene deletion. So we had gene deletion in alpha thalassemia and you should know that point mutations are very common than the gene deletions. Therefore, obviously beta thalassemia is relatively more common than the alpha thalassemia. And it's mostly seen in the Mediterranean regions and also the African and Southeast Asian populations. Right? Now guys, beta genes may be having any of the three forms. For example, if we write beta, it means this beta will form a normal uh, polypeptide chains or beta polypeptide chains. If we write beta positive, then this gene will synthesize the beta chains but in reduced amounts, therefore we will have a reduced amount of beta chains. And if we write beta naught, this form will not synthesize any beta chain at all, therefore we will see the absence of beta chains. Now guys, obviously we will have two copies of beta gene and which may be having any of the three forms. So we have two copies, one coming from the each parent and which may be having any of the three forms. So what are the possible combinations? For example, this beta can have another beta form and this will synthesize normally our hemoglobin molecule, specifically the beta genes. Now discussing about another forms, this beta can be present also along with this beta positive and it can also be present along with this beta naught. Therefore, we may have these two conditions and this will lead to beta thalassemia minor. Now guys, you should know that the thalassemia is actually autosomal recessive. And as it's autosomal recessive, therefore two copies of, sorry, two defected copies are uh, required in order to have the symptoms of beta thalassemia. Now as there is one normal copy, therefore we won't see any symptom, therefore it's known as beta thalassemia minor, it is an asymptomatic condition. It is asymptomatic condition and it's a silent carrier. It can lead to the thalassemia in the next generation, but here we won't see any kind of thalassemic symptoms, right? Now, talking about this, beta positive. Now, beta positive can be present with its, uh, with the another form, with another copy having beta positive form, or it may be present with the beta form, but that will be similar to this one, and it may also be present along with the beta naught. So, we have beta positive, beta positive, and beta positive, beta naught, or also beta positive, beta, which will be this condition. Now, beta positive, beta positive or beta positive, beta naught forms will lead to a condition known as beta thalassemia intermedia. Now, this is mildly symptomatic. So, it is mildly symptomatic and it does not have much of a pathology. It has a, the symptoms are quite similar to that of the alpha thalassemia in this condition. Now, talking about the final form, this beta can be present along with the, sorry, this beta naught can be present along with the beta form, which will give us this condition. This beta naught may be present along with this beta positive, which will give us this condition. And finally, it can be present along with its similar copy and it will give us beta naught beta naught, which will give us beta thalassemia major. Now this beta thalassemia major is also known as Coley's anemia, right? Now we will discuss the pathology only of this form because it does not have any pathology and it has very mild symptoms. We are not going to discuss about those. So we'll only discuss about the pathology of Coley's anemia or the beta thalassemia major. Now see what will happen. As there is complete absence of beta chains, therefore the alpha chains will precipitate because they won't find beta chains to form a hemoglobin, therefore they will precipitate within the RBC and will damage the RBC. Now as the RBCs will get damaged, obviously they will be destroyed and hemolysis will take place. Right? Now there is an important thing, RBCs mostly contain hemoglobin therefore and the hemoglobin con uh, contains mostly iron in ferrous form therefore when hemolysis will take place we'll see release of iron and obviously this hemolysis will lead to anemia and that anemia obviously for anemia for treating anemia we'll require 
repeated blood transfusions and those blood transfusions will also lead to increased iron because the blood that we take will also contain iron. Now how will our body respond to such conditions, such anemic conditions? Obviously it will synthesize erythropoietin. Now this erythropoietin will cause two things. What? One is that it will stimulate the bone marrow for synthesis of more blood cells. Therefore there will be erythroid hyperplasia within the bone. It will also stimulate some other organs extra which will lead to extra medullary hematopoiesis. For example spleen. Leading to splenomegaly, liver, leading to hepatomegaly and also bones. But you should know not the bone marrow, the bones like facial bones and skull bones. And there is increased stimulation of these two bones. The facial bone, what will happen? This frontal bone will become more prominent and it will cause the frontal bossing. And if skull is, uh, if we have the increased stimulation to the skull, it will give rise to crew cut appearance. Right? And this will lead to the chip, chipmunk facies. Right? Now what will happen is, increased erythropoietin, uh, due to these erythropoietin, what we will have is, we will have increased absorption of iron. Why this happens? Because for the synthesis of RBC, we will require iron for hemoglobin. And therefore, in order to uh, get more and more iron, in, uh, we, require, uh, we require more iron, therefore absorption increases within the elementary canal. Now all these three conditions, first, second and third, these three conditions will lead to iron overload state. Now as there is increased iron within our body, what will happen? It will first affect the hypothalamo hypophysial portal axis. Now as this axis is affected, what will happen? That the growth hormone won't be synthesized, therefore there will be reduced amounts of growth hormone, which will lead to the stunned growth. Right? Now this increased iron will also affect the pancreas and as it will affect the pancreas therefore what will happen we will have decreased insulin leading to diabetes but this diabetes is called as bronze diabetes because of the color given by iron as there is increased iron it will give a bronze color therefore this diabetes is known as bronze diabetes and final thing is this increased iron will also affect the electrical activity of heart leading to the cardiac failure so what are the symptoms of uh, beta thalassemia major actually we have Splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, we also have the frontal bossing and crooked appearance. Then we also have the stunned growth, bronze diabetes and the cardiac failure. So these are some clinical conditions which are caused due to the beta thalassemia major. Also we will have increased serum iron and also we will have decreased growth hormone and decreased insulin. So these are the cl clinical findings related to the beta thalassemia major. So guys that's everything regarding thalassemias. And in our next lecture, we'll be discussing about the anemias. So guys, please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching.